You see, wait, let me just check the mirrors. Are we? You don't have anything in your teeth, <laughs> No spinach. <laughs> All right. If, if I could have my wish, I would want economic inclusion to be, get to the point where it's not an issue. Uh, but the only way we can get to that is that it becomes a habit. It becomes more of a piecemeal approach. Well, let's do it today, then it fades away. Well, let's do it uh, the next day, you know, three years from now. Economic inclusion has to be a habit. It has to be something that we do every day in order to be effective. I'm Andre Bryan. And Hi, I'm Phil Davis. My name is uh, Rick Zamora. My name is Barbara Blake. I'm Tina Hamrick. My name is Jean John Fania. The most important message for leaders to hear about smaller businesses, women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses in Northeast Ohio is that there's a vast amount of talent out there to be accessed and much of it is available at lower cost than some of the larger firms that they might want to use. There are many very qualified and very um, capable vendors who are out there and sometimes it's tough to meet some of those folks, it's tough to know who they are. Uh, big vendors um, are much better at having sales forces and sales teams and big marketing budgets to be able to get in front of business decision makers who are making purchasing decisions. It's harder for small firms to do that. Being that we're a small company and not even necessarily that we're minority, it's just the access to capital has always been an issue. Um, they always say, you know, those who have money can make more money. You know, it takes money to make money, but unfortunately getting the money to make the money has always been the issue. You cannot have a discussion on economic inclusion for the minority business community without including some discussion around economic inclusion as it relates to workforce and workforce development within the minority community. So the two have to go hand in hand. Typically we get into economic inclusion discussions around the business and what can businesses do. But those businesses have to look for a workforce that sometimes looks like them. Uh, they sometimes are in a location, maybe it be geographically uh, or based on the demographics that they could afford at the time. Uh, they have to find and develop a workforce that really is going to uh, uh, enhance the organization. One place leaders could begin to help small businesses be included in this bidding process and um, the diversity piece, I think, is to get us together and really understand what we can offer. Where are the limitations for small business? Um, how we can rewrite some of these RFQs so that we can participate and be part of them. I think really they, they need to understand what the small businesses in Northeast Ohio can provide. There's a, a plethora of talent out there, but we can't get our, our toe in the door if we're written out of the process to begin with. A lot of times the processes are written in such a way that it's very specific and you can almost see that it was tailored towards someone else. The number one thing that people can do to support each other within the women-owned business community and the minority business community is to build relationships among themselves to do those referral networks to help uh, get access to individuals that, that they wouldn't know otherwise. And what we need to understand is when we meet someone, we're really looking at their whole network. And so you need to be very broad about who you're really going after and to try and bring other groups in with you if you can to expose them to the other business leaders in, in the city and the region. So just reach out. Align yourself with the resources in their community that will help them to grow their business. Um, a lot of times they may ask someone that's not um, educated and so there's all these myths out there of how to do this and how to do that and so they have bits and pieces of how to run a business and there are structures in place that give you that step-by-step -step, um, uh, approach to getting your business off the ground and that provide an, a network of resources. So it's really taking advantage of the local resources in their community and, and it's, it's matching that passion and that fire in the belly with the education and the knowledge that it takes to succeed and to compete.